Tetra Pak cartons are already lightweight, recyclable, and made mainly from renewable resources, like wood fiber from well-managed forests where trees keep on growing. But we didn't want to stop there. Tetra Pak is committed to reducing the impact of our packages even further. And one of our objectives is to increase the content of materials in our packages that come from renewable resources. There is a shift happening everywhere. It's a shift away from fossil fuels, like petroleum, coal, and natural gas, to safer, more renewable materials. Everybody knows that fossil fuels are all around us. They power our cars, they heat our homes, they're in everyday objects. And for so long, we felt like we didn't have a choice. We didn't have any alternatives. But that's not necessarily true. You can make plastic from soy, you can make plastic from grass, you can make plastic from corn. But there was one in particular that really caught our eye because it didn't upset an ecosystem and it didn't upset a food supply. Sugar cane. And that's why we came to Brazil. Brazil is the world's largest grower of sugar cane. The country is huge. It's almost as large as the US, a little over 3 million square miles. And a whole third of the country is used only for farming. But because sugarcane is a dense and productive plant, growing it only uses about 1% of that farmable land. Brazilian sugarcane is very water efficient. Almost all of it is irrigated naturally by simply rainfall. The sugarcane region is in the center south of the country, about 1,200 miles away from the Amazon rainforest. So there's no chance of contributing to any deforestation. The good thing about growing sugarcane, or any plants, is that they capture CO2 in their growing process. The sugarcane is harvested and sent to mills, where it's split into two parts, sugar for eating, and something else called ethanol. The edible sugar goes one way, and the ethanol goes another. But what's great about this process is we are left with something that's really cool. It's a pulp, which in Brazil they call bagasse. What's so special about the bagasse is it's a biofuel. It's a fuel source that is used to power the entire production process, further reducing the need for fossil fuels. They make so much energy from this biofuel that it actually powers the surrounding cities, meeting their energy needs. Another thing that's pretty cool is that they have developed a process of collecting this nutrient-rich liquid in the process of milling the sugar and use it as a natural fertilizer for the next season's crops. Virtually no chemical fertilizer is used in Brazilian sugarcane. Also, the sugarcane industry in Brazil uses no genetically modified organisms in their fields, so the sugar for this new kind of plastic is GMO-free. When you compare making plastic from sugarcane versus plastic from petroleum, the numbers are pretty astonishing. The production of 200,000 tons of sugar-based plastic represents an annual reduction of 800,000 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere. To put that in a different perspective, that's the equivalent to the annual emissions of over 800,000 cars. And the plant-based plastic is exactly like traditional plastic. It's durable, protective, and best of all, it's 100% recyclable. At Tetra Pak, we are always striving to improve the environmental performance of our packaging. And using plant-based plastic is a great step forward, both for the environment and our customers, by protecting what's good.